Hi, welcome to the conversation you told me I'd taken too long to have, the one on nutrition. And as I'm waiting for you to get your notebook and paper because you're going to need it and to tell your friend to log on, um, I'm just going to introduce my amazing breakfast table. Well, actually, I think it's amazing. You think it's amazing. Uh, the nutritionist who answered the call of me, 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 I'd like to have that conversation with you, is Kate. Now, Kate um, <clears throat> Kibara is a clinical nutritionist. She is a wellness coach. She does amazing things, loves food, loves to talk about food and nutrition. But um, you kind of looked at my, my great offering and you were like, immediately you're like a principal you're like the headmistress of food <laughs> <laughs> you know i have a passion in healthy eating and healthy living uh -huh. and um, i think uh, when you look at the world today a lot of things are changing we're getting a lot of degenerative diseases yes as you get older things are happening you don't know why you're adding a kilo when you get on the scale oh i know mine i'm uh, in my 40s it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's so hormonal and menopausal weight uh, mm -hmm. yeah that's what we say and <laughs> so we need to actually concentrate on the food uh -huh. because uh the background or your your foundation is made by the time you're the age of 40 unfortunately because uh it, research shows that you control your age, uh, aging process by the time you're 40 only 10 percent so before 40 you control like almost 90 80 percent wait so that's call like your girlfriends <laughs> didn't i tell you i was giving you a minute to get your notebook sasangalia what no, yeah. no, no. so you're saying that from what from, from the time you were born, uh -huh. let's talk about after adolescence. Uh -huh. when yeah, yeah, I was going to say, let's get there. Yes, uh, so when you're a young teenager, to all the way to the age of 40, uh -huh. you control your aging process by 80%. What you do at that time, if you're exercising, if you're drinking water, if that's what lays your foundation for your future. And unfortunately, we realize this when we're after 40, 50, and that's why you find a lot of people at that age, that's when they start struggling to eat healthy. I know. You start struggle to exercise, you're yes. struggling to do everything right. We want to run a marathon, we uh, want to do this, exactly, we want to do that. Exactly, but the foundation is done when you're younger because you control your 80% of your aging process by the time you're 40. So when I looked at this so, breakfast... So, so look, <laughs> I, I took all your questions, I printed them, I was ready for the nutritionist, and then look, look at what she has just done to us in the first three minutes. So when you looked at my... When I looked at the breakfast, you know, breakfast is the most important meal for the day. Okay. What we do, we skip meals, so we don't take breakfast, uh -huh. but you need to jumpstart your metabolism when you wake up. And this is important by taking your proteins, your carbohydrates, your vitamins and minerals, and drinking water. I have. And this is because according to your biorhythmic cycle, the way your body operates, in the morning, at night, everything is happening. Maybe you're resting in the morning. Between 5 to 6 in the morning, your bowel is active. Yes. That's why when you wake up, a lot of people just go to the... Uh -huh, no, I, I, once I have my water, because I have my water, I, I've noticed... Whoop. Exactly, and it's it's best to take a glass of warm water yeah, when you take... Warm water. Yeah, so uh, after that, because of your metabolism, so by your biorhythmic cycle, your breakfast needs to be the heaviest because now you need that energy back. You've been sleeping, a lot of things have been di happening. You're digesting food, you're doing all these things. But I'm doing this because the whole of Nairobi who is on keto and intermittent fasting is like, hey, boost up that nutritionist. Okay, so those of us, I'm, you know, you didn't even <laughs> give us a minute. You went straight into the conversation. I love you. I wish everybody I interviewed was like you. So are you saying that we on intermittent fasting, I'm saying we because that's a, now who's going to represent you on this table, the nutritionist has already gone. <laughs> we who are saying, um, no, we will stay fasted until midday or we'll stay fasted until 3 p.m. We're doing ourselves a disservice? Intermittent fasting is okay mm -hmm. only when you know how to break the fast and how frequent you do it. Oh, yeah, because breakfast doesn't mean 7 a.m. It's when you break that Fast. Exactly, but by, uh, okay. but by the the way we have been, because of our biorhythmic cycle, you wake up at six in the morning mm -hmm. or five in the morning. Mm -hmm. Within two hours, you've showered, you've done your thing. Mm -hmm. Your body needs energy at that time. So when you have that intermittent fasting, when you decide to eat at twelve o'clock or, or at three o'clock, yeah. it means by that time, between uh, six in the morning to three o'clock, your body is using the stored glycogen 
or your stored energy is known as glycogen mm -hmm. to keep you alive, to keep your brain alive. But isn't that what we've been told is burning the fat in our system and has mm. helping us lose weight? No, it does not. What happens when Oops. you I, I, <laughs> Don't leave, don't leave our live session, don't leave, don't leave. Uh -huh. What happens when... Uh, when we eat food, the food is stored into glycogen and ex uh, that's uh, reserved energy. Mm -hmm. And the excess is stored as fat. As fat. So when you eat, eat a lot of excess carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, mm -hmm. it all goes to fat and mm -hmm. that's how we add weight. Okay. So if you're eating healthy and you have your glycogen, mm -hmm. so I've not eaten, let's say, I'm assuming right now I've not had anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to eat in the next four hours and your body, your cells need to be nourished every two, three, three hours in a day. So the next food I take, if I'm going to eat again from six, I'm going to have food at midday. Mm -hmm. Because I've already used all my reserve, mm -hmm. everything you eat, and unfortunately we do not eat healthy at that time. It is fatty, it is, it has all the saturated fats, it's a lot of, it's all stored as fat. So the glycogen quickly takes it back. It's stored oh, back. It, it's stored be back. Because you're using it. If you're trying to lose weight, you need to eat more. But if you're doing fasting, mm -hmm. Where you are, and I actually have heard this before. Yeah. Yes. The less you eat, the more you add weight. Your body needs that fuel for it to keep. It's like a currency; it's going round. So the more you provide the energy, the more it burns. But when you do not provide this energy from your food, mm -hmm. the hypothalamus knows that Kate is starving. There is no more food. So to nashikilia, nashikilia mbaka kuletena, akikula tena, aishikilia again, and that's a problem. That's why we don't lose weight when you do all these diets or we skip meals. Because you're not, cont uh, and this also reduces your metabolism. All this time. I know, yeah. and, and you know, I'm one of those people who, when I see something, I'm like, it's wrong, and, but, but, but don't, you know, but, but you know, when, when something is a fad, I mean, it's like pyramid schemes in this town. When something is a fad, don't, don't, don't you dare be the one to say, teacher me, admin, I have a question. What's wrong with you? You stay in your corner. But I know that in the time, and this was sometime last year when I tried it, my, 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 my energy levels by 2 p.m. were rubbish. Were exactly. rubbish. And I am on the go all the time. I mean, I wake up like a light. I'm mm. up at five and I'm going. Mm -hmm. and, and I realize, mm, nah, this is, I'm cranky as well. Exactly, because your, your mood, your energy levels mm -hmm. affect your mood. Because you do not have enough for the body to operate all the systems, the circulatory system, your respiratory system, your digestive system, the full good hormone that is, uh, that is known as uh, adrenaline mm -hmm. cortisone mm -hmm. that is found that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. If the levels are very low, you now start feeling cranky, you're not able to perform, you want to eat again and that skipping of meals, if you're not going to eat food from morning to around 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. that makes you even start craving. So the next food you're yes, going to the, eat, the, uh, Literally, what, whatever it is you catch, you eat. Exactly. You'll be shopping, you'll be driving, you drive through, you see uh, fast food, you feel like you're, you want to have it because the body is craving. The body gives you for what you ask it. The body asks you for what you give it. So if you're providing it out of sugar, it's going to give you sugar. It's going to ask you for sugar. Oh, you're giving it. Oh, wait, because that came up. Sugar. Th it's here. So what, what is it we are not saying about sugar and sugar intake? That came out from the comments. So um, yeah, I'm glad you went straight to sugar. I was about to serve myself coffee and have some, but no, <laughs> the, the nutritionist is talking. As an, um, the nutritional point of view of sugar, sugar is like a poison. Uh, reason being, sorry to use okay. such a word. She didn't, she didn't even <laughs> actually go slowly into it. It's because uh, we use sugar to sweeten our food, but how is the sugar processed? Sugar is a simple carbohydrate that acts as glucose in the system immediately. And when you take something that is high in glucose, what the body does, the pancreas produces insulin to balance this glucose because I'm going to get to catch diabetes or something mm -hmm. related to sh uh, a glucose imbalance uh -huh. if I'm taking too much of that. So taking too much sugar makes you... Um, have your liver or your pancreas produce insulin. The insulin now uh, makes it, uh, converts it, uh, the pancreas converts it into glycogen, then fat. That makes you fat and this now regulates how you're going to feel, how you're going to crave and what you're going to eat. And this means when your sugar levels are low in your body, mm -hmm. you crave food. So you're going to go yeah, to Yeah, because your sugar like, level is low. Yeah. But, 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 but what, apart you from caught that, my attention when you said this and I want you to just stay with this. You said, your body will ask you for what you give it. 
Exactly. So if you give it sugar, it will ask you for That's more okay. sugar. That's okay. forever. Think of a baby. Uh-huh. At, uh, maybe a six month old. Mm -hmm. You've, you're off uh, breastfeeding, you're mm -hmm. winning. Mm -hmm. And then you're making, uh, maybe your house girl or someone just made milk, mm -hmm. uh, porridge mm -hmm. or some beverage mm -hmm. and added sugar. Yes. That baby won't take any other thing. And but that because the taste buds adjust within three days, your taste buds adjust. Three days. Exactly, and that's why even people who take alcohol, for example, mm -hmm. the first day it did not taste good. It didn't have a good taste. Uh -huh. After a while, you just love the taste. You crave for it because your taste buds adjust, and your body now asks you for your what you provide. Your notebook. Write that down. Your body will ask you for what you give it. Exactly. The reason I, I well, that was a. Ding ding moment for me because I I really cut back my sugar to almost nothing a couple of years ago. So the first thing I noticed is if I have sugar and I come off that sugar high, I crash almost to the floor. I mean, I'm like done. I'm, I'm spastic. I'm annoyed. I'm not. But also, you know the way you go to a restaurant and you ask for fresh juice and you say it no added sugar. Yeah. I can taste added sugar. In fact, it gives me a headache right here. I'm like you. Uh, yes, I can taste it, That's so you can't lie to like me. It, yeah. You can't lie to me. And it's because sugar is addictive. Not, uh, not only what I'm talking about, how it uh, brings that yo-yo effect in your system where you have high energy, low energy, yes. high energy, low energy. It's also not, uh, it's pure, simple carbohydrate. So you're just taking the carbohydrate with no nutrients. And apart from everything else in the processing, uh, I think it's not something that should be taking all the time. And mm -hmm. look at... Uh, all the unhealthy food on the shelf, what do they have? High fat, high sugar. Sugar adds but taste. It, I was going to tell you, it also makes things taste good. Exactly. So for the taste, uh -huh. but you, you know, that's not the aspect you're looking at. The nutrients, we talk about calcium in the body, minerals like calcium, mm -hmm. that needs to be absorbed. The elements in sugar make your calcium get depleted. That's as you get old, you're getting bone-related conditions, your bone becomes very skinny, you know, like hockey sticks, because what you're doing is not correct. So it's not something that should be taken often, but uh, you need to regulate. Natural glucose is the best. You need fractals. You, you need know all what? Those things. I'm going to move on from this conversation. Comment, raise your questions. Kate will come back. However, um, and I want to go to my plate. Exactly. Yes, I do, because... You, you, you were grateful, but you, you almost started doing a marking scheme because you're the headmistress of nutrition, <laughs> clearly. What's wrong with what I've put before us? Okay, let's say I, don't, I have, but let me say, I have mushrooms, I have beans, I have spinach, a little bit of toast, there's some potatoes. Uh, we've got egg, yours is scrambled, mine's an omelet, bacon and sausages. This is the living. I know, but it is the living until... Uh, period of time where it's not the living. People who are, were, unfortunately, when you uh, develop a generative disease, you'd not eat this for breakfast because it's not something that is giving you, uh, we need to feed ourselves. We're made of nothing but cells and that cell needs to eat every day and it, eats, it needs to eat healthy for it to keep you well. So what I'm talking, uh, the so breakfast. I thought you'd be impressed. Let me tell you where I was coming from. No. I thought, wait, <laughs> can't be here telling. No, Just wait, no, I'm okay. not passing anything. Because you remember that plate we had in school? Uh -huh. So I was like, proteins? Carbohydrates. Yes, so it's in my casote. But what we have here, the problem with this one mm -hmm. is that, and unfortunately that's what we do a lot here, we have too much concentrated protein. There's something known as food combination. Okay, so tell me. When you say too much concentrated protein, you know it's, we're going into December, and when we go and on holiday, you yeah. know this is what our breakfast plate is going to look like. What should I remove? For me, from this plate, mm -hmm. I would remove the bacon. Okay. And the sausages. Mm -hmm. As two concentrated proteins, because mm -hmm. they are made of animal protein, mm -hmm. I would leave this as uh, the eggs, uh -huh. because it's also a concentrated protein. Okay. But I would supplement it, because again, you need to take a lot of uh, protein, high protein food in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I would supplement it with the uh, beans and the mushroom. So we oh, already so have more than there's too, there's, there's too much it's protein too on much. the plate. It's like you're giving your digestive system a traffic jam. Because different foods... I like her. <laughs> uh -huh. Because different foods need to be digested at a different rate. And that's what we are told. Take fruits on an empty stomach. Do not drink water when you're eating. 
because you need your digestive juices to come out and digest the food for the nutrients to get no, in. And I've actually put down my fork because I, I, I need to remain very real. So when you're so taking we, your sausages... as Kenyans yeah. wait to tender holiday Mombasa, Nanyuki, Naivasha. Buffet will be laid out. To, when we go trip one, we will go and bring our fruits. And then we'll do trip two. Some people trip two, they'll do cereal or oats. But most people trip two will be this one. And then because we're on holiday, trip three is where we say, ah, uh, can I have a coffee? And we'll mm -hmm. probably have a croissant or because mm -hmm. there's always, mm -hmm. I mean, because, because the layout is the layout. No, it's your time to spoil yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the, I'm telling you, this is the good living. I've already understood. Actually, with the baked beans, the bacon, the egg and the sausages, it's too much. You're right. It's a traffic jam. Yeah, it's too much. And because it's too much and uh, it could, if it was too much and healthy, it's better. <laughs> but if it's too much and not as healthy okay. as it needs to be, then there's a problem with your system. And like I said, your cell absorbs the nutrients as you take it. So if you're not providing as you eat, if you look at sausages, what are they at the end of the day? Nothing, cholesterol, fat, and all that. <laughs> and the bacon. So this could be a meal, maybe over Christmas that you're taking once in a while. Once. But Exactly, but do you know, uh, during the festive uh, season, yeah. we excuse people because you're spoiling yourself. Now, I'm just saying, th th there's a person who looked at what we put together and said that, now that. But what you could do to help yourself, uh -huh. maybe if you included foods that are high in fiber, if you did a lot of juices that have antioxidants, like a fresh juice, a lot of fruits and veg, it would help. Okay, I got fruit. Tell me about our fruit combination here. Because this is another thing. Remember there was a time, and I don't know how long you've been running your own practice in the office, every chick had a container. Lock, lock and lock. Tuck, tuck. Everybody at the container, it had this. It's all women at. I know it's not the way to go. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to your fruit salad, mm -hmm. unfortunately what we are used to, like I talked about fruits, you need to take them on an, on empty, an empty stomach. stomach. So don't take your lunch. Or and your, then have fruit Then you have the fruit after. No. Wait Write for that one down. Minutes. I said bring a notebook. Take your fruit on an empty stomach. So. No. This is because fruits are digested uh, above the stomach in the duodenum and they take 45 minutes. So if I was going to take this uh, after my food and I've eaten my nyama, nyama takes, yeah, it takes so long and, by the t and it has to go, carbohydrates are digested from the gut all the way to the stomach and then the, uh, the stomach acid is the one that digests proteins. And then if I take my fruit later, it finds all this mix, like I was talking about a traffic jam, but it mm -hmm. finds all this. So it's better for you to assimilate the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals from your fruit, if your system is open and empty so that it just goes through to the duodenum and the nutrients go where they're needed. And that's why after you may be bloating, gassing, you don't know what's happening because of that uh, small thing. Another thing about fruit, mm -hmm. uh, it's not very advisable to take a lot of uh, well, too much fruit. Yeah, you know, too much uh, of the fruits together. Mm -hmm. It's good maybe like uh, have it by itself. Yeah, if you had a watermelon, maybe have and a it. pineapple. Okay, that's perfect. But, yeah, but combining too much. Lazima. Kwanza, there's a whole mother who just makes a living out of scooping this for us. But you know, because on diet, nakulanga fruits too. Yeah, fruits are okay, but I'm saying do not combine so many at the same time. This is because they are different in nature. Watermelon is like 98% in water, yes. so it just passes through. Mm -hmm. Look at the pineapple, it's acidic, or the mango is acidic, mm -hmm. so that one will take time to digest. So uh, the grapes are high in sugar, okay. they're high in fructose and flavonoids. So when you combine that at the same time, maybe the assimilation may not be too good but it's not a very bad thing you can do that but mm -hmm. if you're going to have like two fruits or mm -hmm. three fruits in the morning mm -hmm. that's fine but on an empty stomach it has to be empty if you take nothing else from this particular live session have fruits at the end of meals uh, is a no-no fruits should be eaten on an empty stomach yes and also drink water after or before your food not with the food We're so used, you've just started, yes. like you was having this and then you're having your uh, glass of water. Mm -hmm. And then we continue. Yeah. There are two disadvantages for this. Uh, you need your gastric juices prepared in the system to digest the food. And when I drink water, what happens? You, di you 
first you wash the food down before it has been digested. <laughs> Carbohydrates <laughs> is starting in the mouth, like I said, uh -huh. proteins in your in, in uh, my gut. In your gut. Uh -huh. So if I have just taken a piece of this sausage uh -huh. and then I drink the water, I'm just washing it down to my colon where it's it sits there because it has Maybe, should I call it hurried digestion? Mm -hmm. It has not been broken down the way you needed to. Oh. So you should take your water 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after the food. And if you're craving water as you take your food, mm. it is because you're not drinking enough water. So anyway. your, ga your gastric juices are actually screaming and asking you, okay, what will we use to digest because we do not have enough fluid in this system? So okay. the water should be before Let me and go. after. Let me go to the questions that were asked. <laughs> Um, so we touched on that, touched on that. <laughs> now I'm looking at my plate all different now. Hold on, hold on. Ah, dairy and milk. So I, I, I love the, I love cold milk. I'm one of those people, but I'm lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. um, which means I'm one of those who will do this even before I have ice cream. I'm like, how far and where do I, I need know. to be? <laughs> I'm gassy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, but but last year, um, a lactose-free brand was introduced and it's great. And I'm not going to say um, what it is here. So what's your position on, and let me just read this properly, on dairy, milk, and loose milk? Loose milk, nearly in a up. Straight from the farm. I think it's the one that has the metal uh, oh, that containers. Oh, one. That they too. Uh -huh. So tell me about dairy. Milk is an excellent product to take, by the way. Okay. Uh, as much as, uh, you know, we have vegans and strict yes, vegans yes. and all these things, the only source, we need amino acids, mm -hmm. the 22 complete amino acids, and unfortunately, they only come, or fortunately, they only come from the animal source. Oh. So for you to combine all your amino acids for your body to build, you mm -hmm. need to take something from the animal protein. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, these days, there are herbs like, uh, you could take like Moringa, you could take certain herbs that okay. actually, you could take mushrooms, you could take soya products oh. that actually bring this. But milk, milk is excellent. It's a beverage that you can take, mm -hmm. maybe with a... Uh, with tea, you can take I'm it. I'm about uh, to have it with the coffee. Uh, yeah. But uh, you were talking about lactose intolerance. Yes. Um, as you're growing up, huh? a child has, uh, we have an enzyme lo uh, known as lactase. Uh-huh that digest lactose in milk. I figured, let me just eat my mushrooms because the nutritionist <laughs> might be marking scheme here. Mm -hmm. Lactose is a sugar in milk, mm -hmm. so it has to be digested. There's also other things in milk like casein. Casein is a protein in milk that uh, actually maybe makes you get, uh, there are people who take milk and they're allergic, they get like, uh, oh, okay. yeah, yes. so because of the protein. Mm -hmm. So milk gives you from vitamin D, it gives you enough iron, mm. it gives you so many minerals that you need. Uh -huh. But where, as you get older, uh -huh. unfortunately, our enzymes are depleted. Yes. Either because of you as a person mm -hmm. or because of the environment that you exposed yourself to. Mm -hmm. And this is not only the lactase uh, enzyme that is depleted, mm -hmm. even enzymes that digest uh, alcohol are also depleted with time in the liver. So as you get older, by the time you're 18 or 21, you find that you have no lactase, the enzyme, okay. to digest the lactose. And that's what makes oh, people that's lactose what, intolerant. intolerant. And this intolerance, of course, it's, it's related to so many things. So if you can get lactose intolerant milk, yes, lactose it's excellent. Free milk, you're good. Yeah, you're good to go. All if right. you already feel, mm -hmm. you may find a few people, one or two, who are not lactose intolerant, mm -hmm. so they can stand the milk. Mm -hmm. But milk is good, and mm -hmm. you can add it in so many foods. You can bake with. I know. Can, yeah. Okay. And so some of you asked about milk and dairy. Um, and then you talked about the loose milk. Loose milk. This is the one to not to, to, sold in plastic bags. You know, and and a jerry can. I think like, and that one is good. You make talk about direct. I think the thing about the downside about this is that it it is. It it's, is not. It is still, not clean. It is not clean. It is high in bacteria and everything the cow ate. All you're those also things. If, it, if the cow was treated, <laughs> yes. If anything happened, even the transportation, the packaging. So you're at a risk of attracting so many things. I'm going to have a conversation with you about loose milk. How do you type these things to me on my on my Facebook page? So here's the thing. Leave us with three things that we can do from today, don't make them too hard, to change our relationship with food. I already know this is never happening again. Because actually, <laughs> no, 
now that you mention it, it's ridiculous. It's protein, 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 protein. What yeah, is that? Concentrated doing? protein. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, you can substitute. Yes. So yeah. I already know that. I have already learned from you that fruits are best eaten on an empty stomach and don't combine too many of them. One or two is good enough, okay? I already understand that fiber is not a, a matter of, oh my God, you know, oh, I need to have fiber. No, it's the brew Essential. that clears your mm -hmm. colon. Mm -hmm. I have understood milk is good. It's fantastic. Give me something else I can do that is not complicated. Like, by the way, changing this plate is not complicated. No, it's not. Understanding not to eat my fruits at the end of a meal <laughs> is not complicated. Mm -hmm. Give me two more. I think I would say, uh, number one, as, as uh, we sign off, mm. I would give uh, the followers mm. an opportunity or uh, a tip. Mm -hmm. Just try to drink six glasses of water every day. Uh, that, that's when I do. Stop asking me For about For one asking. week? Yes. Just one week mm -hmm. and see the difference. Mm -hmm. It's those simple, uh, simple steps. Mm -hmm. And then again, your diet should be how you're going to eat for the rest of your life. It is not something that you do for a season. It is not something that you do for today and yes. tomorrow. So come up with a two-week menu. You can spoil yourself. There is no problem with spoiling yourself, but once guess. in a while. Yes. But have different variety of foods because monotony also creates your cells to have mm. this disturbance. So it's getting the same thing throughout. Just try to take natural foods and then reduce stress, exercise. Walk. Healthy eating is so simple. It's mm. only that we are the ones that make it so complicated because of what we think and what we see. And what we see. Exactly. You have been a blessing. Thank you. Uh, the, the fact that, don't you love the fact that we started this conversation and you were busy trying to get your headphones on and she said, huh, your aging process is controlled <laughs> before you use 40. Every 42 year old said, wait, I just got here. <laughs> But I, I have loved the fact that you did not complicate the nutrition conversation. Exactly. And also one thing else to add, uh -huh. your cells are renewed and rejuvenated every day. So everything new that you provide right. gives you a healthy system and yes. a healthy body. Your heart muscles are, are renewed or rejuvenated uh, within two years. Mm -hmm. They are done. Mm -hmm. Your face, your skin within 28 days. Yes. Your cells are renewed and rejuvenated. So yes. your body is working for you. It does not work against you. Only if you provide the right nutrients and the environment that your cell needs for it to keep healthy, then you're working with it. But by the time your tractor disease, the cell is already tired and your system is tired because it has worked so much for Kate for all these years. <laughs> so it's a simple tip of just triggering that and mm -hmm. providing the right nutrients as you eat. And remember, your body craves what you give it. Exactly. I love I loved that. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you can comment below, disagree, argue with me. However, come back because I really do want to have a conversation with you about milk. I do. Because you guys, nini, sour too. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kate. Thank you too. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, so we will clear out the plate and have breakfast the way you like it. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>